beeping mother It's WrestleBound, as you should know by now. And to put some context on this video, it's November 2021. The TLC pay-per-view has been canned, we're on the third mass release of the year, and it is about that time of the year too where we're due for an old school Raw. Not that I have anything wrong with that, they can be fun nostalgia nights, but like half their marketing now is on old stars from past eras with not the heaviest emphasis on new talent. You looking forward to who's getting squashed by the old geezers? I sure am. I'll give them credit though, World Wrestling Entertainment has a rich history, full of legendary moments and superstars that are forever etched in fans' minuscule minds. Most moments have taken place at the grandest stage of them all. You just can't call it granddaddy anymore because it dates the event. Many have wanted to attend, a lucky few have lived it, but many others want to relive it or even take part in it. Well, there's a game to satisfy those weird kinks you got. Believe it or not, I've been to a WrestleMania when it came to my home state. I have the pictures and sign I took to prove it, but I can only imagine what it was like to be at the Showcase of the Immortals during its early days, let alone be a participant of it. WWE Legends of WrestleMania in my mind came from pretty much out of nowhere as it was released between the traditional SmackDown vs Raw games THQ and Ukes would chum out every year. It was to coincide with the upcoming 25th anniversary of WrestleMania, which technically wasn't the 25th anniversary, the one I went to was, and they probably took this name as the obvious other one was already taken. The game was only released for the PS3 and Xbox 360 in North America, Europe, and Australasia in the month of March, while Japan would get it on July 9th of 2009. Support goes up to 6 players, and the ESRB rated it a T, 14. If a particular wrestling fan saw this box art, they would have more than likely gone nuts over it. Up top we have a Mount Rushmore of sorts for the WWE, with Stone Cold, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and Andre taking priority. The Giant looks like he's about to tie it up with the game logo. It's a little weird they skipped over the new generation stars like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. They could have gone where Bobby Heenan and Jimmy Hart are, but they were an integral part to the time period, so it's only fitting for them to get their time in the sun. I not only have one of these shiny official product stickers, but a second one on the spine. Good to have double certification. The back fits in a lot of detail concerning a myriad of features and compatible elements, but the tagline of relive, rewrite, and redefine will be hard to keep your eyes off of. As much as I want the company to move on from the past, even I can't deny that their past was fun when it was good, so let's enjoy it in the most appropriate and best way possible. Hopefully. The game isn't wasting any time heading straight to the title screen, and neither shall I, so we'll head into Exhibition. Obviously the roster is going to be stacked with stars of WrestleMania's past, and there's quite a lot of recognizable faces, and a few oddball inclusions. I'm talking about... Andre! The Giant! Brody! And that guy whose nickname is what I call my penis. It's also been called this too, but I'm picking Arn Anderson because... I pull out the Glock, put it on his forehead, and spill his brains all over the concrete! And he'll go against the Honky Tonk Man because he's cool, he's cocky, he's bad, and I want to annoy a friend. A friend of mine grew up during the Golden Age and hated the Honky Tonk Man, and even told him so on a plane ride. That has to be the best compliment you can give to a wrestling heel in their older age.
The boys and entrances are decent for the time, and some of them look closer to their counterparts than others. They're also built with either muscle or fat, which was mostly accurate. They were larger than life, but Honky wasn't that built. You think this game considered roids as a factor? It's good for the bodies, but not for the balls or the brains, where we get told how the controls work, which is nice to start, but I'm here for a reason. I know for a fact that a good percentage of you can't read, so allow me to be the eyes of the illiterate and the ignorant. Square is used to strike, X is for grappling, triangle is for blocking, and circle is for pinning or running if you double tap it. Double tapping, holding, or using the left stick with select buttons will yield different actions and results. It's a very simplified control scheme, as those are the only buttons used at all times, and you can use the directional buttons as well as the left stick to move, which reminds me how some arcade games work, which I believe is what this game is going for. The presentation is slightly different compared to SmackDown vs. Raw. I mean, look at the camera angles. Instead of being farther away, it's close up as it would be in fighting games, and every grapple move is like a mini cutscene as if you were doing a brutal combo move. Speaking of combos, with every subsequent move you make, you'll build up this red meter. You're trying to build it up so you can hit your finishing move. You also have this retro meter that represents your health that can go down pretty quick if you continually pummel your opponent non-stop, which is what I as Double A did to pick up the win. Believe it, viewers, I don't lose every first outing. There's still a little more to explain, though, so we'll have a quick rematch. When an opponent is groggy, you can implement a chain attack, which is a QTE, but THQ had to make a creative trademark. The QTEs come in a couple different forms, but usually involve hitting the right button when it comes up, or trying to hit the right button to either block an opponent's attack, or hope to hit an effective move. It's different for a good reason, to try and make it stand out. Hell, it's even incorporated into your finishers as well. And the Enforcer won again. Now I know what you're thinking, oh you have it uneasy again, well I have some news for you, it was on normal the whole time. I know this doesn't prove anything, but if you don't believe me, well fuck you too, eh? You probably noticed there's a couple of matches that are locked, but don't worry about them now, as we'll come back to them later on in the video. But right now, I just want to let you know about a new rule I'm implementing on the show. To shorten the length of the overall review and seeing how most of the same match types appear in every game, I'll only go over matches that are new to the game, unique to the game, or control significantly different compared to others, which is the case of the latter match. It starts out the same, except we have a ladder in the ring, but it gets weird when someone attempts to climb up. It's convoluted to all hell with so many camera angles and prompts, and I'm positive the computer has an advantage. I couldn't win this for the life of me, and I played it twice trying to figure it out. It's probably the worst match type on here. I wouldn't bother with it. The rest of the matches will be familiar to you. Tag Team, Triple Threat, Submission, Handicap, they all control pretty much how you would expect. You don't need to ask why Dusty Rhodes fought against WWE's main eventers. I imagine if Vince knew what sperm the American Dream would sprout out and produce in the future, he would send him to Dick Kick City, without question. Now another good reason I'm cutting the match selection portion down is because there's no telling what could be left to look at in a game, and with Legends of WrestleMania, it is plentiful. First things first, we have the options where you can configure a good number of settings, and there's also a cheat code section where you can implement a few codes that only unlock alternate attire that I imagine you can unlock elsewhere. I'll give you a tip, if you hit ALT on the keyboard and hit 7820, then BOOM, you'll get my alternate costume. Which brings us to the create modes. WWE games by this point offered a lot of customization, and it's no different here. You can get a Cal, 
That's create a legend pretty close to yourself or what you envision yourself to be, though I will admit it's laggy when applying lettering or logos, but after that you can change its standard moveset and his entrance extensively. There's also a create a tag team option, but I don't have any partners, and I prefer to work alone as it is. We are not doing that gimmick. Get out. Now we come to the game modes, pretty much the reason why this game exists if the tagline is to be believed. You can relive infamous WrestleMania moments by remaking certain events of the match for points, rewrite other moments by doing the same except the outcome will be different, sounds like someone had regrets over past bookings, or redefine other, other moments, which may turn the original concept on its head. My favorite part is the packages, taking you back to a simpler time and a definitely more innocent time before we knew who among the roster were either assholes or monsters. Among all the other things that are wrong with the WWE, still celebrating past stars in light of their controversial past ought to tell you how reliant they are to that past. Now, there are two more things to look at while we're here, like the Hall of Fame, where you can look at stats and achievements you've gotten during play, or Legend Killer mode, and no, it isn't a mode where you kill legends as Randall Keith Orton. It's instead a gauntlet-style mode where you have to defeat a certain number of wrestlers in order to get to the legend in question. Personally, I don't like these kinds of modes, it's repetitive and boring to me. I would much rather just face Bret Hart on a harder difficulty setting. Hitman? More like Hardman. That doesn't work as well as it would with the Iron Sheik. He'd make you humble. Online is a thing, was a thing, doubt anybody does or did that, and I would say that is everything. But this game has a very unique feature that's perhaps exclusive only to this game. You might have noticed this import SmackDown vs. Raw 2009 selection. Well, if you so happen to have saved data from that game on your console, you can import most of the roster from SVR09 and increase the roster of this game twice fold. I'd say most because there are a few exceptions, like original characters and stars that were released by the time of this game's release. But hey, it gives you the chance to do unique dream matches with the stars of then, versus the stars of 2009 now. I forgot to say, doing the WrestleMania Tour mode for a little bit will unlock the remaining matches, so now you can fight in a steel cage, Hell in a Cell, or Iron Man match with even more wrestlers. Which is what I did defeating Triple H in the hellish structure, Suck it, Brian. The steel cage is the old type, and it has the same kind of deal the ladder match has with prompts, but much more tolerable, even if I didn't win. And I fought an extensive battle with Brian Kendrick that ended up in a tie. That was a bummer. We weren't fighting over the rights to his music, not in the slightest. I'd hope he'd give me his blessing, as his theme tune was sick. I'm sure you would agree. Legends of WrestleMania received fairly positive to middling reviews, pretty much getting what its SVR counterparts would usually get. Speaking of which, the SmackDown vs. Raw series would continue, and there was one other arcade-like spin-off in WWE All-Stars that was developed by THQ San Diego three years later. THQ would go bankrupt in 2012 and the WWE license went to 2K, and in their first game they mimicked the same gimmick Legends of WrestleMania was built on, reliving legendary moments throughout the Super Bowl of sports entertainment with the 30 years of WrestleMania mode. Imitation's the sincerest form of flattery, or maybe 2K wanted to capitalize on the other 15 years of the show of shows that Legends left on the cutting room floor. Though WWE goes back to their past way too much now, back then they had a good reason to. 25 WrestleManias had come and gone, or at least were as this came out before the 25th incarnation, and they were celebrating its past in all its glory. This game was a product of said celebration, and that's where it pretty much remained as far as I can see it. 
Not many talk about this game, and if they do, it's few and far between. Does it deserve to be looked back on? Well, that's entirely up to you. For me, I found it to be a little unique with its presentation, slightly altering a few things to make it look like something new, but it's really the same Ukes THQ game, just with different stars and setting. It does have a few things going for it, though it isn't the first game to incorporate legendary wrestlers into a separate game, it was the very first to go down the route of using the history of WrestleMania as a backdrop to the game's theme and gimmick, and with the option to import another roster to the game, it adds more to what some consider a boring game, and it's one of the few games to use such tech to expand the game in a fun way. It may not be lock-on, but it's something. It's fine, a little different, decent at best, boring at worst. I do wonder how this game sold, if it's one of those weird instances where not many knew about it and in turn it's hard to come by and my video inflates the price, but I think nobody really cares because there's so many wrestling games that are about the same as this. You can make the call if you want to pick it up or not. I had an okay time, though not mind-blowing. It isn't that bad besides being a little repetitive, so I'm going to give it three stars. Man, 2009 was a strange year, wasn't it? And I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was my second or third year of watching wrestling, and I'm kind of nostalgic about it, but not many others talk about that year at all. So while we're at this time frame, maybe we should look back at it.